5 times 5, sorry, minus 1 to the power of 5, which is minus 1 modulo 7. So once again, the difference between this guess and the, what I've written is, well, in this guess I know there is at least one solution, but to conclude that there are no, more, no, no other solutions, I have to make two other. If x is a solution, then, well, x is this thing. <coughs> Basically, this one, yes. <coughs> make convenient. Okay, so I, I cancel this congruence module 7. We've learned quite, quite a bit of tricks how to, to work with prime modules. Now, next. I want to solve the original congruence. But you know, I already know something about its answer. Whatever answer I have to, to this problem, I know that it will be minus 1 modulo 7. So let me write it this way. x is minus 1 plus 7 times y. I just proved this. I solved this congruence modulo 7, so I know that x is minus 1 plus 7 times y. For some integer y. Now let me go back to the original question and rewrite it in terms of the new variable, y. So it will be solving minus 1 plus 7 y to the power of 5 is congruent to 6 modulo 7 squared. This 
conference. Well, of course I can solve it. It's just linear functions. How do I solve it? Well, I know it has one solution. Seven is a small number. Once again, you can guess. Here, I'm trying to find the inverse of 5 to the 7 because 5 is relatively prime to 7. It exists. And I can just guess. So 5 times what, 1 is not 1. 5 times 2 is 3. 5 times 3 is, okay, 5 times 3 is 15. Oh, sorry. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 is 3. But 5 times 3 is 15. It is exactly 1. So y is over to 3 modulo 7. Okay, so... From here to here. Okay, so the argument is plain is, I know that... Okay, so, so maybe I should add a step here. And here. So the argument is like this. This congruence means that 7 squared divides the difference of 7 and by y minus 1. It just goes written here. But that's the same thing that 7 itself divides by y minus 1. So if I have kind of this situation, all the terms are divisible by 7, I can cross out the 7 to the whole terms. Okay, so now I know that y should be 3 modulo 7, and I know, well, let's recall what, what we know. I know that x is minus 1 plus 7 times 5. And I want to find it modulo 7 squared. Well, that's, that's basically it. I know that y is 3 modulo 7. Well, if I add another multiple of 7 to y, it doesn't change 7 times y modulo 7 squared. So basically, x is minus 1 plus 7 times 3, so it gives 3 modulo 7 squared. So the trick was first solve the congruence modulo the prime number. Then if you want to go to a prime square, well, just take the knowledge that you obtained from solving the conference into this prime number. Write your solution as, well, your solution modulo p plus a multi multiple of p, unknown multiple of p, and try to, know, to, to write down the equation of this unknown multiple. So suppose, If I want to solve, so to solve x to the p is common to 6 modulo 7 cube, if I want to solve such equation, which, oh, it seems that it's much more complicated, but the idea is the same. You first solve the modulo 7. So, We know what, what we get. We know that x is minus 1 plus 7y to some y. That's the full solution modulo 7. Then solve it. Modulo 7 squared. And we get that the solution is y is 3 plus 7z for some z. Same thing. And now rewrite the equation, either the original equation or the equation that you obtained about y, and rewrite it in terms of z. And then solve. Let's look what we are going to solve. We are going to solve this equation modulo 7 cubed. So once again, 
these terms, the dot 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 terms, do not matter because they contain 7 y e to the power 3. But this term, well, now it doesn't. It's actually the sum. So, so this thing, minus 1 to the power 5 plus 5 times minus 1 to the power 4 times 7 y, which is 7 times 3 plus 7 z plus condition we write it here. So Now I have this equation and I will just yes, cancel everything which oh, I can cancel. So here I will get minus 1 to go to zero. So it will be minus 1 plus right and 7 times 3 plus So 
whatever it is, you see that, well, even if you want to solve modulus cell Q, which is itself a huge number, I mean, huge for just computations. If you do it in just in steps, well, at the right moment, some, some, some of the huge powers of 7 will just cancel out. So you just have to do it one step at a time. So module P, then module P squared, then module P cubed, and so continue this way. Okay, so let's get to this now. 